Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Internet Buns Food Quiz by Rahul Mohanty. So Rahul is a friend of mine. He hosted a quiz on arts a few weeks back. It was well received. A lot of uh, good reviews for the quiz. And he has come back to host a quiz on food. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you for uh, taking your time setting up this quiz. Uh, the pleasure is all mine, uh, Nambi. Uh, and hi, everyone who has... Uh, you know, graciously accepted to participate in the quiz and, uh, you know, spend their uh, Sunday morning uh, working over some food-related questions. Okay. So I hope uh, people are uh, streaming in as we are speaking. I have my, you know, YouTube stream open over here and I, I'll be looking at the counters as well. So, so far we have, what, 17 people? Yeah, we have 17 people and Nakash Gupta is saying uh, you had to put a waffle in the background. Sorry. Uh, well, it's a food quiz. I know uh, this quiz would be a bit, uh, you know, tormenting in nature uh, in terms of all the food-related uh, picks, uh, picks we have. Okay. Yeah. So, apologies in advance. Yeah. So, for people who have already joined us, thanks for joining us. And... Uh, can you also share where you are participating from? So probably in a minute or two, as more people join in, then we can start the quiz. Yeah, that would be nice to know um, where everybody is participating from. Um, so, uh, Nambi, I think uh, you forgot to put in a side-by-side -side view over here. So yeah, yeah, that was. It seems, that it seems I mean. like I am like uh, you know one this big yeah. bigger standing out on the quiz over here. Yeah, I'm trying. To we can we that. can share space. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but that's fine. Uh, as in trying to change the layout in Google Meet, probably something like a. Second. After one year, we are still figuring out layouts. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a Zoom person now. I have to use. I have recently used this thing called Blue Jeans. I never knew that something like Blue Jeans existed. So there was a meeting on Blue Jeans, and then. Okay. Blue there jeans. Are, yeah, blue jeans for video, like another uh, video conference up there. Okay. Right. We have Francis Rodriguez from Mumbai. Thank you for joining us, Francis. Uh, Diganto Sarkar from Madodara. Mahesh Gwyn from Chennai. Chirag Bharadwaj from Agra. Thank you, guys. Abhinav Das Gupta, one of our uh, consistent participants uh, from Sonia Indore and Bina from Mumbai. Okay. Anura Darvatkar from Vadodara. And Anil Raghavan from Question. Okay, I think all over India. Abbas Das Gupta from Kolkata. Thank you, Nikita Singhal from Bangalore. Thank you, Nikita. Um, so, Rahul, we want to kind of give a context about this quiz, and then probably in a minute we can get started with the first question. Yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, nothing much. Uh, let me probably I should share my screen now. Okay. Okay. Uh, probably we can start looking at. Uh, uh, small rules and stuff like that. Arun okay. TP has a question for you. T-shirt counts a hai? T-shirt uh, Game of Thrones ka hai. So this is something I bought in London. Uh, when I was in London, uh, I was attending a Comic Con. So I found this really cool T-shirt. Uh, when Game of Thrones was still cool. Okay, but uh, it is still uh, because cool of the po <laughs> it is still cool for me as well. Okay. It, uh, one season doesn't change the uh, brilliance of the show, but uh, uh, yeah, I am a big uh, Game of Thrones fan. So yeah, and uh, just I mean, for a clue for the early bird, there may or may not be a question based on Game of Thrones. <laughs> <in the quiz. laughs> now you don't give go out uh, giving out questions over here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Let's so, get started. There are forty-four people in the live stream. We can get started out. Okay, for some reason I'm not able to see my. Um, are you able to see yeah, my yeah, yeah. Uh, presentation now? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway, uh, I. Yeah. Okay. Quite a few Before, slides. I can see the sorry? folder now. I can't see the presentation. Hold on. Um, it should share actually. For some reason, it is not sharing. Okay. Maybe a st uh, stop from full screen that might block something and stuff like that. I have no idea. The window. Okay. Yeah. Now it's. 
Yeah. Now I can see your presentation loading. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, this works. You want to go full screen of the presentation? Yeah, I'm going there. Going there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, uh, even though it is a food quiz, uh, this is more of a food themed quiz. Okay. So 21 questions on food. Uh, that's the whole quiz, uh, and uh, a point each for each, uh, each question. Uh, so in total, you could uh, score uh, 21 points on this uh, quiz. Okay. So. The format is pretty simple. Anybody who has been attending these uh, uh, the quizzes, we have uh, Sunday uh, uh, morning quizzes. What we have, watch on YouTube and answer on Google Forms. So, if you have any doubts, post in the YouTube live chat section. Uh, just a clarification: don't post answers. If you post answer, you are going to help the other participants as well as uh, this the uh, you know, hazard of being banned. Recommended use is two device, one for uh, you know uh, viewing the question on the YouTube live chat section and uh, one to answer on the Google Forms. One form per team. There are some teams uh, who, ha uh, who have duos, but uh, we would appreciate that if you have only one form per team. If you have multiple forms, we unfortunately have to disqualify you. And as along for all the online quizzes we uh, have to have, don't Google. Okay, uh, play in the spirit of the game, and uh, yes, I try to make the question as uh, you know accessible as possible, as many clues as uh, given, as many clues as possible. And if you need clues, just uh, uh, you know ask for clues. I am I'm not the kind of guy who block clues. And yes, please don't block clues because if you are going to block clues, I'm going to aggressively give more clues. Okay. Okay. So that is a that is a funda for my quizzes. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, that's pretty much. Any questions till now? Uh, no one has asked any question. I think we can go, get started with question one. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, then we start off with the first question. Okay. So yeah, <clears throat> um, the following images are of the three common street foods that trace their origins from 19th century Ottoman Empire. The left one originated from Istanbul. The middle one is from Greece. And the right one, and which is the most popular one, is from Egypt. Curiously enough, all three are named similarly because the way the meat is cooked. From which English root word does the following three snacks derive their name from? Okay. The way the meat in this uh, food has been cooked, okay, that uh, gives the name to these all three dishes. Three dishes are from different places, as I have said, uh, Istanbul, Greece, and Egypt. Uh, they have their local names for this uh, kind of uh, street food. And uh, the third one, I mean, the, the one on the uh, right uh, is from uh, Egypt, and that is the most popular one. But all three of them have pretty much popular names for them. And it is based on a very uh, common English uh, root word in the way the meat is. So I just need from which root word does the following three snacks derive their name? Do you want to give a clue for this, Rahul? Um, yeah, probably what I can say is that uh, uh, the one on the right, uh, the Egypt uh, one, which is the most popular name for this particular street food, is also available. Uh, is also popular in uh, Indian diaspora as well. Uh, but we actually see this in a very different form. This is not the usual form with uh, with which we see it. Okay, it is slightly different. And if people are still uh, uh, looking for clues to post that, I will give a small additional clue, which will pretty much be, uh, would be a giveaway in this case. Arun TP, your reverse psychology is not going to work. Okay. Um, we'll move on to the second question. This molecule that has a numbing effect on your tongue is found in spices originating from southwestern China uh, and West African region. The molecule gets its name from the Japanese term for the spice that originate from the southwestern China, not from the West African region. Focus on the fact that it is uh, the name of the spice for, uh, from the southwestern China. The southwestern Chinese spice also lend its name to a cuisine that heavily uses it in its preparation. Okay, 
So which cuisine are we talking about? Okay, for the, this molecule. Yeah, go ahead. For the previous question, Vignesh Venkat is asking for a clue. Um, this particular, uh, I mean, this uh, the one on. Okay, I'll go back to the question number one very quickly. So uh, for the third one, uh, just uh, remember that uh, this particular food was made famous due to a very successful movie franchise. Okay, I think we can move to yeah. Q2. Yeah. So yeah, coming back to question number two. We are talking about a southwestern Chinese spice which lend its name to a cuisine that heavily uses it in its preparation. The uh, you know functioning molecule uh, which uh, define this spice has a numbing effect on your tongue. That's a clue. Uh, and it is from the southwestern China region. Okay. We'll move on to question number three. There are no more. Yeah, no one. S spelling mistake chalega. Ah, spelling. Spelling mistake definitely chalega. Okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, and this is a kind of, uh, yeah, that's like, I think, a clue for all the other people who might not. Yeah, mind. sort of here. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, people. So, yeah, people who are watching, uh, please don't answer in the live chat. There is a answer sheet. Please don't there. answer. Please, yeah, there is an answer sheet over there. Please, uh, Nabi, if you can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on. As part of EU regulation, one stated that by 2010, uh, all weights and measures on packs must be metrics. So an entity decided to drop its famous phrase on a popular product because 426 ml of something in every 227 grams of something will simply not have the same ring. However, it retained the iconic image that defined this phrase on the entity and the product. Okay. So which phrase and entity or product are we talking about? The fact that they are not going to use the metric uh, notation and say that 426 ml of dash in every 227 grams of dash simply won't have the same ring. Try to think in those terms and you should be able to arrive at, at a very popular phrase and uh, the entity or the product. Okay. So you have to give me the phrase and either the entity or the product should do. If you know the phrase, obviously you will know the product and entity. We'll move on. This nutritionally complete meal can be found in three varieties depending on the US state where it is being served. There is a rice, oatmeal and mashed uh, uh, garbanzo bean uh, version, a non-dairy cheese uh, and a raisin combo, and one that includes applesauce, garlic powder and spinach. Where do one serve this kind of meal? The meal is in quotes over here. Or alternatively, you can just name the meal. Okay. The picture alongside is in, in a preparation phase. It's in a preparation phase. The final form is that of a bread. That should be an additional clue for the name. Manas, which question are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, I was also start? not sure. Maybe it's a previous question. Probably we can... Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Manas, you can also, uh, like, uh, if you want us to stay on a question, just uh, uh, put it on the question YouTube chat. Yeah. yeah. Three, okay. We'll, we'll go back, don't worry about it. Okay. We'll go back. Pay attention to the fact that there is a rice, oatmeal and mashed uh, garbanzo bean version, a non-dairy cheese raisin combo, and one that include applesauce, garlic powder and spinach. This is a nutritionally complete meal. Where do you serve this kind of meal? Or you can just name the meal. Okay. The final form is that of a bread. Okay. Abbas Das Gupta is asking hints for the fourth question, this question. There isn't any hints for this particular question, but uh, uh, pay attention to the fact that I have put uh, uh, the uh, 
phrase nutritionally complete meal in uh, you know in quotes and even the fact the meal itself is in quotes should give you a big hint plus if i can give a clue rahul it sure go ahead it looks delicious but it is actually not oh that's a good clue no satya i really appreciate that clue clue yes it does look delicious but it isn't so that should give a big hint very nice hint uh, satya very helpful hint Oh, sorry. I keep on calling you Satya. I should yeah. call you Nappi. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, for uh, Manas, let's go to three and then go to five. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'll very quickly go back to three. Um, just think of a popular product because four twenty six ml of dash in every two twenty seven grams of the dash will simply not have the same ring. Uh, only because EU regulation has said it should be in metrics. Although EU regulation. Uh, for being fair did say that you can re retain the phrase it said to the entity or the product that you can retain the phrase but they said that well no we are not going to any more advertise that phrase but yes there is a iconic image which uh, defines this phrase okay arun tp says that someone else mom's cooking yeah someone else is going to punch you as well okay we'll move on to question number 5 Yeah, this one is a long one. My apologies in advance. Describe that J Lockwood Kipling as about as handsome as a stack of hays. These networks of building in British Raj was first erected in 1840s to serve as staging post for the Imperial Mail service. They also doubled as uh, free accommodation for the government official or cheap accommodation for other travellers. These lodgings serve the bare minimum with the postman, caretaker, and the attendant. The common fare served was eggs and chicken dishes. Considering the delicate stomach of British administrative official, the caretaker should pre prepare a dish that has the native chicken and eggs as the protein and are mild in nature. Since you know this was mild and quite delicious, it became so famous among the official that often the caretaker started cooking it as soon as he heard horses signifying the official was arriving. So identify this eponymous uh, structure that lent its name to this particular dish. Yeah, Anil Raghavan said that uh, for question four, did you say not delicious? Yes, it isn't delicious at all. Okay, so yeah, that should give a big clue for question number four. Coming back to question number five, pay attention to the fact that this serve as staging post for Imperial Mail service. So that should give you a huge clue. This, uh, if I can give a clue on the area, this is more popular in the northern and the eastern side of uh, India. Okay, Indian subcontinent. It was quite famous in those area, and the fact that the staging it served as staging post for Imperial Mail services. Okay, Ishita, that is brilliant question five. Thank you, Ishita. Hey, thanks. You will say that I know that. <laughs> cool. Let's move to the question six. Sure. Okay. Question number six. Uh, this vegetable is ninety-six percent water, but contains a host of vitamins such as vitamin C, B complex such as niacin, thiamine, and riboflavin, and is rich source of mineral like a uh, uh, bad grammar, and it is a rich uh, source of minerals like iron, potassium, zinc, calcium. Magnesium and a good amount of protein, carbohydrates, and dietary fiber. This vegetable is also an important part of a sweet that is almost synonymous with the city. Okay, it is also serving as an alternative in Hindu custom because of its shape, because of the shape of the vegetable. Uh, it also is serving as a uh, alternative in Hindu custom. So identify the sweet and the city. And what alternative does it serve in Hindu custom? You can either identify the sweet or the city. Both the city and uh, sweet are uh, interchangeable in this case over here. Like I mean, um, both uh, use uh, different names for them uh, for themselves. The yeah. sweet uh, originated from that particular city. Yeah, shall I give a personal anecdote clue here? Sure, right. 
yeah long back when i think 10 years back i was doing isha yoga classes and they also like uh, apart from the yoga they also go into about food and all that so in the food section they were recommending this particular vegetable like this has all the nutrients it's positive pranic and all that so yeah this is that kind of a vegetable ah uh, nice in india as you can see the you know nutrient contents of this particular vegetable it is uh, quite uh, nutritious if i can also say that there, there is an apocryphal story attached to this particular sweet as well so a lot a lot of people do uh, cite this story as uh, you know uh, the origin uh, origins of this particular uh, sweet but it is apocryphal to my knowledge that's why i didn't give that uh, funda over here So Rajat Guru yes. Raj is asking, do you need Hindu custom along with the sweet and city? Yes, I do need that. There is an and in between. I never said or. I need the sweet city as well as the alternative uh, it serves in Hindu customs. I think that's the more uh, interesting panda in this. Sure, the sweet city is quite easy to figure out. Yeah, the alternative is a. Uh, this is something I have been observing from my childhood every year. Okay. right around uh, you know september anything between uh, from september to october time i usually observe this ritual let's go to next one yeah sure okay where was this menu served and in whose honor was this menu served this year so i'll be uh, you know maximizing it so this particular menu was served in the honor of somebody for this particular year so i have blanked out essential uh, part uh, uh, so that it doesn't become very easy to crack it so we uh, we have tempura shrimp spicy tuna avocado eel sauce uh, tempura flakes pickled ginger wasabi and soy sauce uh, being part of one dish then the second dish is prime steak and uh, chicken fajita uh, made out of grilled vegetable refried beans uh, mexican rice Because they got a sour cream, guacamole, flour tortillas. Uh, then we have a dessert trio uh, where they have prepared classic flan churros with uh, chocolate sauce and sopa pillas. Okay. And as uh, as a selection of wines, uh, we have the 2015 Schaefer uh, Red Shoulder Ranch uh, Chardonnay, uh, Carinos uh, Napa Valley 2015 Schaefer Hillside Select uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Stag Leap District and Napa Valley. Okay, and it is served in honor of somebody. I hope this is clear enough. Um, Abhas asks that which part helps for the Hindu custom? Uh, the fact that this, uh, uh, the way this, uh, you know, vegetable is uh, shaped. I won't give any more clues on that. served in 2020 anil served in 2020 not for 2021 2021 hasn't arrived yet it is still early days in 2021 this was uh, uh, 2020 yeah 2020 not 2021 it's 2020 yeah 2020 uh, thanks for clarifying that yes this is uh, for 2020 not 2021 cool let's move to the next one sure This commodity was created and patented by Japanese artist and horticulturist Tomoyuki Ono in 1980s. The original intent was that for easy storage and processing, but the subsequent outrageous pricing made this a rare novelty item rather than a purposeful variant of a more commonly available kind. Now a whole industry exists in the city of Jinzuzi, Ikagawa Prefecture, where. this item has morphed into other forms as well and are found in high end japanese grocery stores so which commodity are we talking about so originally uh, it was created so that uh, this commodity this uh, variant of a commodity uh, can be easily stored and uh, processed but uh, ultimately and eventually the, um, the pricing was so outrageous that it it was made as a rare novelty item and uh, rather than the purposeful variant of a more av- commonly available kind 
now it has become a whole industry because of this uh, you know uh, being a novelty item in the city of jansuzi in kagawa prefecture where this item has morphed into other forms as well okay that should be another clue and it is also found in high end japanese grocery store which commodity are we talking about so nikhil inla ask what do you mean by commodity um food product food whatever this is a food quiz so take your pick it's a variant of a easily available commodity it's a variant no no, no i don't mean condiment definitely not a condiment definitely not a condiment i use the word commodity in order to not completely give it away yeah do you want to say that five letter word no okay okay i'll i think we should leave it like that probably we can go to the next okay one. yeah we will we'll leave it at like that okay if more people you know clamor for the five letter word then probably i will leave it that okay. okay i'll move on in 1872 uh, the brothers paul and raymond founded the company la maison lille in podensac south of body of france among other uh, among other things uh, they manufactured a class of aromatized wines inspired by father kerman who left for brazil and manufactured fortified drinks based out of quinine in 1887 one variant of this aromatized wine was created which was black which that means white instead of red and originated from great sotone region about 99 years later this variant was forever discontinued and caused much consternation to connoisseur across the globe regarding the authenticity of a certain alcoholic drink i'll clarify this would be a cocktail okay this would be a cocktail the regarding the authenticity of a certain alcoholic drink so what is the variant that, uh, we are talking about and which alcoholic drink or cocktail authenticity are we worried about pay attention to the fact that the company name is lamazon lille and they manufacture fortified drink based out of quinine what is the variant we are talking about and which alcoholic drinks authenticity are we worried about this alcoholic drink or cocktail as a place in pop culture as well that is the clue i would give this uh, alcoholic drink or cocktail as a place in pop culture as well a very prominent famous place in pop culture yeah yeah very famous place in pop culture moving on a regional specialty of surat the more popular name of the dish comes from the way it is prepared pay attention to the fact that the more popular name of this dish comes from the way it is prepared in which is in an earthen pot upside down and underground this dish is specially prepared during uttarayan which means around this time with winter vegetables across uh, household in uh, gujarat the palanpur variety has mustard oil while the kathiawadi has muthias muthias is nothing but a falafel of sort with uh, besan and fenugreek the ahmedabad variant is spicy and reddish whereas the surti one is green in color and contains garlic this vegetarian dish has also fused with bohri community to introduce meat as its indigen ingredients which gujarati disc are we talking about venkatesh balakrishnan please don't venkatesh and uh, jayshree please uh, 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 refrain from answering please share the answers only in the google form link please don't share the answers here yeah please don't uh, sh- uh, share your answers or guesses in the google form uh, sorry in the youtube live chat we'll move on yeah author to one of the first novel on slavery and in fact one of the first american novelist she was a reformer for women's right 
in terms of both education and employment. She raised 30,000 for the completion of Bunker Hill Monument by organizing bake sales and craft fairs to raise money at the Quincy Market. She is like, you know, one uh, achiever considering uh, the time period she lived in. But she was also instrumental in a couple of significant and iconic achievements. Okay. First, she created a nursery rhymes that has its own place in history. Second, she was instrumental in a campaign which started in 1846 that lasted for 17 years before Abraham Lincoln acquisition for the same. Okay. So I don't need the name of the person. I just need which nursery rhyme did she compose, which has its own place in history, and what was the campaign was all about. Pay attention to the fact that this is the food quiz. The food part is not uh, limited to the fact that she organized bake sales and craft fairs to raise money at the Quincy Market for the completion, for raising money for the completion of Bunker Hill Monument. But she was instrumental in the campaign in 1846 uh, that lasted for 17 years. She was like, you know, the early change.org uh, petition kind of uh, method she used where she uh, wrote letters to various presidents where it, uh, you know, concluded with Abraham Lincoln who finally acquisition uh, for the same and said that, well, go ahead, we allow it. Okay. So what was the campaign was all about and what was the nursery rhyme she created? The nursery rhyme itself is very, very famous for a very different reason. So that should be your other clue. I don't need the name of the person. But yeah, there are some previous, I just wanted to share about this uh, rather remarkable woman. We'll move on. What special distinction does this Burger King holds for giving two hoots about their name and being part of a landmark case? Pay attention to the fact that how the Burger King looks over here. So what special distinction does this Burger King holds for giving two hoots about their name and being part of a landmark case? attention to the fact that how this uh, Burger King restaurant looks like and that should give you a clue. Question going out of focus. Uh, Satya, can you uh, pin the uh, presentation? It is the same that I have. I have not changed it. Yeah, probably it is. Good. So uh, they want a bigger image on the whole thing over here. Okay. So yeah, if it helps. And in case if a quality uh, video is less, quality of the video is less, tap on the three dots, you will be able to see the uh, quality settings and increase it to the higher percentage so you can read the text properly. Yeah, probably this is more of a bandwidth management by Google Meet. But do let us know if you are facing any issue over here. We'll be more than happy to help you out. We'll move on. The fondness for this food item in Asia Pacific and Hawaii region has to do with the fact that it was restricting the resident uh, of Asia Pacific and Hawaii region to indulge in deep sea fish. So in order to replace the protein, they resorted to this food item. It also became a godsend for the folks across the Pacific, that is Japan and Korea, where this item resulted in saving many lives from starvation post-World War II. However, it was hated by American GIs who were sick and tired of eating this three times a day and often sent hate mail to the primary manufacturer. The primary manufacturer used to dump these letters of abuse in a single repository as pretty much useless. That should be a biggest clue. Uh, today, Korea is the second largest consumer of this item, US being the first, where it is considered as a luxury item and often gifted with cooking oil, cooking oil and seasoning during the Lunar New Year. What scientifically processed animal matter in this item that has another ubiquitous meaning in our lives? Okay. If you look at the question, there are clues staring at, at your face over here. 
I have almost given out the answer in in a couple of places if you look hard enough. Okay, we'll move on. The Children of Ginkgo is a China-Norway collaboration in the form of a children opera, Helmbeck, Atharina, Jackal Helm, uh, Sen. It is a story about a post-apocalyptic world triggered by an ice age called the Big Sleep, where in a well-hidden sanctuary, the governess and the gardener are keeping little dashed children safe from the dark helpful who roam the earth for dash to steal, exploit, and destroy. Two sisters, Rhinia and Wulemia, then embarks on a mission to wake the planet from the big sleep where salvation lies in the union of two Dikpo Ash. This is an allusion to a real life entity and educating the children about the power and importance of the said entity. Okay, so which real life entity are we talking about here? Pay attention to the fact that it's a China Norway collaboration. So if you look, China has their uh, contribution and Norway has their contribution as well. Okay, so if you look hard enough, you should find both of their contribution over there. And it's a China-Norway collaboration. Look at the fact that how the, this is a inco something. So how does it look? And that should give you a big clue. Abbas Das Gupta is asking, can you go a bit slow on the questions, please? Sure, Abbas. Uh, I'll go a bit slow on uh, questions now. now. But yeah, uh, uh, if you want to, you know, very quickly uh, uh, scan through the question, please pay attention to the, uh, you know, the ones which have been put in bold. That should give you a clue. Especially in this question, the second country probably holds a bigger clue. Yes, the second country holds a bigger clue over here, which is Norway. If you look at uh, uh, the contribution by Norway, that will sort of uh, put you in the real life entity vicinity. And the fact that they're trying to save the world from the ice age where everything has been destroyed. We'll move on. Yeah. The Masala Lab by Krish Ashok touches upon various scientific aspects of Indian cooking by the author's nerdy eyes. In the book, he often uses humor in a poignant way to drive home the point he is trying to make. For example, consider the following excerpt from his book. Flavor is a combination of taste, smell, mouthfeel, and to a smaller extent, sound and visual experience as well. And despite the fact that 80% of flavor perception happens in the nose, we tend to associate the tongue as being the dash and dash of flavor to the nose dash dash. Okay. So I'm asking you to fill in the blanks What uh, for these blanks over here. So as you fill in the blanks, you will be able to draw parallels to a real life situation where a duo accept and appropriated the hard work put in by another person without giving any credit. Okay, so that is the parallel he is trying to draw over here when he says that the, uh, the nose uh, does around 80% of the work over here and uh, the 20% work is carried out by the tongue. So the nose, uh, the tongue is the dash and dash of flavor to the nose uh, dash dash. So we are talking about a duo who has uh, assumed the work of a single person over here. So is this the uh, reason behind, are, are the blanks same, Anil Dagavanas? Uh, no, the blanks are not same. Like uh, uh, one blank is uh, dash and dash. No, uh, I mean, uh, the dash and dash are two different uh, uh, words over here, uh, two different uh, uh, persons over here. This is a single person to the nose dash dash. Yeah, I think you gave a clue there. Yeah. yeah. Is that people? This is a single person. 
duo, no, that is something I have already mentioned. Uh, right. Okay, so a duo accepted and appropriated the hard work put in by another person without giving any credit. Abbas Das Gupta says lovely questions. I, Thank I, you. I believe he got it. Uh, Naman asked for a clue. Uh, Can I give a personal anecdote clue? Sure, go ahead. So, a few weeks back, there was a bio quiz that uh, we had streamed. And sometimes when you stream the quiz, we also have video of some documentary. So, after the quiz was over, we got a copyright strike from BBC. Because I believe they made it either a documentary or a movie based on these three people. Which was also featured in the quiz because of which we got that strike. I don't know if this is an helpful clue. But yeah, I will give a slightly more helpful clue over here. So, this duo and the other hardworking person were involved in a Nobel Prize winning, uh, what you can say, discovery. Uh, discovery. Hardly a clue. Yeah, I got it. Tarun Ishita Das is brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Yeah. There are four dashes in the question. There are four letters which are of significance in this particular. Did I give too much of a clue? No, 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 no. I, I think I will. I will just say that uh, uh, this is uh, this is a. I mean, this duo and the other person over here. This is more of a uh, what you can say. It's, uh, it's related to a Nobel Prize winning task. Keshav Kumar Das has got a great question. I think uh, quite a few. Sorry, Vikash, I, I am fond of giving clues. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Keshav. An unrelated uh, funda or related funda. So, there is this uh, very famous fact no? that potato and apple are of the same taste. It's because of the flavor that you think it's different, as in, like, there is something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nicely put over there, like a potato and the apple will have a same taste if you have a cold. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, that's how it is. I Nobel didn't... is winning task. Okay, so Abhinav says that it is little unfair. No, I don't think that it is absolutely uh, unfair to say that they are served. Yes, because they did uh, try to downplay the other person. Or Okay, I think the question is getting controversial. Let's yeah. move to the next one. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. Okay, this is my favorite question of the quiz. Um, and slightly indulgent uh, question. What is common to all these because of the way it looks and tastes? What is common to all these because of the way it looks and tastes? You know, I mean, these are really common stuff over here. Okay, we are talking about ground nuts, pomegranate, uh, uh, kiwis, and uh, jujube. Okay, these are dried jujube. But uh, because of the way it looks uh, and uh, it tastes, uh, they have something common to them. I believe we might need to give more clues on this one. Uh, I think I'll be a bit... Uh, Okay. Uh, laid back of the clue over here. So I, I have given out these are peanuts, pomegranates, uh, kiwis, and uh, jujube, dried jujube. Because of the way it looks and uh, the way it tastes, uh, there is something common uh, to these four things. Okay, Abbas Jazgutta says hints, please. Time pass fruits, not G Pavan B1. Uh, Rahul, okay. please give uh, them that clue. Uh, yeah, the clue over here is uh, primarily, if I can give over here, the way it looks and the way it tastes, they have something common. They Okay, I'll That's give another clue. Is. They yeah. are being referred by a different name. Okay, they're referred to uh, with a different name Okay, I'll because be... of the way it looks and tastes. Can I be I think more that's sympathetic to the participants and give one clue? Go ahead, go ahead. So there is one neighboring country of India, and it was in ah. new, <laughs> news a lot. So that has a lot to do with this question's answer. Okay. Yeah, that's a slightly giveaway clue yeah, over here. Yeah, but people are struggling, I believe. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so don't just say uh, that country, mention what's the funda. 
what's the fund? Yeah, I think I have pretty much spelled out the answer right yeah. now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Let's move to the next one. Let's move on. Yes. What exactly do we need, Namanjana's for 16th? We need exactly we need the answer. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on. That's okay. During the 1950s, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, MAOI, would be administered to mental patient as they were the earliest type of antidepressant available. Eventually, it fell out of favor because due to concern about its reaction with certain kind of foods. Food that contains tyramine are strictly prohibited and while one wouldn't be allowed to eat tyramine rich uh, food lest it triggers a reaction and kill the patient. So which iconic pop culture dialogue then assume even greater level of its sinister as an inside medical joke because of the above fact. So these anti uh, antidepressant uh, called as monoamine oxidase inhibitor or called as MAOIS, they would be administered to mental patient uh, because they were the earliest type of uh, antidepressant available. But it fell out of use because if if you feel, uh, uh, it reacts with certain kind of foods which are rich in tyramine uh, uh, because it can trigger that uh, reaction and uh, probably kill the patient. That's why it fell out of it. Which iconic pop culture dialogue then assume even a greater level of sinister as an inside medical joke because of the above fact. No one has asked for a clue, so I believe we can move to the next one. Sure. Uh, yeah, Ashwini Nato said that it's a uh, your, Early question. question that, uh, favorite one. I don't know which one you're talking about. 16 or 17. 16 yeah, I feel that's a good uh, like good connect question. Okay, I'll move on then. Uh, manufactured in factories in Himeji and Kasumi Gaura, these food items assume special importance for two different reasons. The first reason is the tradition of Umiya in which uh, region speciality are brought back for families and co-workers from trips away. And the second reason is Due to its similar sounding to the Japanese phrase meaning you will surely win, it is coveted as a good luck charm, especially by students going for exams. Just because whenever you say the name of this particular product, it is almost the same as the Japanese phrase meaning you will surely win. Okay. So which novelty food item are we talking about? And since there is a bit of lag, people are asking clue for 17th. Think of think of mental patients and think of the most famous mental patient in pop culture. Okay, that was a clue for question 17. Yeah, that was a clue for question 17, not for 18. We are not dealing with mental patient in question number yeah. 18. Question number 17, think of a mental patient and think of a think of the most iconic uh, mental patient. If I give any further clue, it will probably a giveaway. But a very, okay, I'll give a very small clue over here that uh, he appeared on screen for a very short while, yet he was memorable. Okay, yet he was memorable. Abha says that. Uh, do you need the exact dialogue? If you give me three uh, uh, keywords, I will accept your answer. Okay. I think he has got it. Yeah, I think he got it. Yeah. Coming back to question number 18, we are talking about uh, these food uh, items which have uh, uh, assumed uh, special importance because uh, uh, we um, the tradition of Omega where you take back a region speciality for family and co workers, just like we take back Toblerone and Hershey's uh, kisses. Okay, so something like that. They also take back this particular uh, food item uh, from special regions. Okay, and the fact that it is similar sounding to the Japanese phrase, which you will surely win because. Uh, for that particular reason, it is coveted as a good luck charm in Japan. 
for students going to exam. It's a novelty food item in Japan, but we get only one variant back in India. Saurabh Sahu says, great questions, man. Thank you. Thank and you. Keshav Kumar Jha says, this is interesting, lovely. Okay, we'll move on to the next question then. According to this actress, the prop she used was made of gummy bear-like material, which tasted awful. So the difficulty with which she seemed to be choking down, is it uh, choking, uh, choking it down, is a genuine physical reaction. It was injected with a sugary syrup that it would burst out as well. She also noted that the prop was incredibly realistic and even contained dried pasta to simulate something in the prop. So you have to identify this actress and character and the prop we are talking about. So you have to identify the actress and characters. character. You can either give the name of the actress or you can give the name of the character and the prop we were talking about. Novelty food in this, uh, in question number 18 hours means that uh, it has become a novelty food. It's a norm, uh, normal snack kind of thing uh, uh, back in India. But uh, in Japan, it became a novelty because of some reason. And that is the reason which you have to give up. Plus the food item. Sorry, there is a bit of a Japanese heavy uh, question. So in my quiz, I guess there is one more about a Japanese panda, but we'll come to that. Meanwhile, we are talking about a prop which was made of gummy bear-like material and uh, which tasted so awful that uh, when, uh, she seems to be choking it down and on the verge of vomiting it out. It was a genuine physical reaction. Okay. And it was injected with sugary syrup that it would burst out as well. Too much anime watching, Rahul. Too much anime, so you are uh, okay. I won't say anything more. <laughs> it might be or might not be anime. Okay. Please hazard on your own guess. We'll move on. Oh, you meant to say that uh, the Japanese country. If you go to this country and ask for a buffet style restaurant, you might have to use a particular term to refer to it. In fact, the concept of a buffet is quite strange in this country considering the history of the mines and food shortages until the economy started to grow in the 1950s. Until a restaurant manager from, the, from that country traveled to another country and found the concept of buffet inspiring and something that can be tried out back home. But the local term for the buffet in the other country turned out to be unpronounceable for them. And as well as the local banks home. So the restaurant manager went with the more, next most identifiable icon from the visited country or for that, from that region, if I can say, and named the buffet as, as such. Identify the country and the term with which the buffet is referred to based on the story above. This is a toughie. We need to... Yeah, this is a toughie. I meant, meant it to be a toughie. Okay. The unpronounceable uh, local term for the buffet translate to English as uh, a open sandwich plate. Open sandwich plate. But it is quite unpronounceable. Even I had a hard time pronouncing it myself. Uh, actually, I have a hard time pronouncing it most of uh, words anyways. But uh, this one was quite hard. In English, it translates to uh, okay, Anil, open, open uh, sandwich plate. Yeah, go ahead. Anil Raghavan is asking general geographic area. He wants a clue. Over general that. geographic area for which one? The what first country it? or the second country? The first country should be quite easy because of the history of famines and food shortages until the economy started to grow uh, in 1950s. And the country has already been featured in this quiz. I mean, this is a very simple spelling, uh, sort of. So I don't think uh, uh, you should be able to, uh, you know, 
mess up on that. Although I have a small trivia regarding that to uh, share over here. Even when they are using that, uh, you know, with the, with the term which with, uh, with which uh, the buffet is uh, referred to, they interchange a letter because just like uh, uh, Bengalis do, okay, just like uh, Bengalis do with uh, va and ba, they also do the same mistake and uh, uh, say this word in a certain way, which also, you know, uh, makes it more and more confusing. Okay, so whenever you go in this country and ask that uh, I want to go for a uh, buffet kind of restaurant and they say this word, you become very, very confused. You'll become very, very confused. We'll see. Sort of, we need to see that what kind of spelling mistake you are. Okay. So identify the country where this buffet style is named after a, another country. Okay. Do you need the home country? Ask Naman Jain. No, I don't need the, yeah, I need the home country. I don't need the uh, other country where uh, uh, where they got the inspiration for buffet. I need the home country and uh, the term with which a buffet is referred to in this home country. No, I, I don't need the one uh, visited by the manager. No. I don't need that one. Okay, before we end the quiz, I would uh, express a ton of thanks to Satya, who, uh, sorry, a uh, ton of thanks to Nambi, I keep on messing up on his name, uh, for giving me the opportunity to host this quiz. I always enjoy you know, hosting these quizzes. I hope uh, people over here have also enjoyed this particular uh, quiz as well. Okay, so we'll go to the last question now. Uh, the etymology of this word comes from combining two words where the first part roughly means to beat down or to knock down. There is a very particular reason I have, uh, you know, not given you the entire meaning because it, it will make it quite easy. But the first part roughly means to beat down or to knock down. And the second part means a place. And uh, the origins is from French roots. Okay, the origin of this particular word uh, is from French root. The combined word from uh, uh, above French root was also part of another portmanteau nickname where the tables were turned quite recently. Okay. Where the tables were turned quite recently, it is also part of another portmanteau nickname. So identify the word or portmanteau. Etymology is in English, ask Anil Ravan. No, the etymology came from uh, uh, French roots. The word is English. The word is English. Definitely English. It has French root. The first part means to beat down or the knock down. The second part means a place. But you would be better served to pay attention to the fact that it was part of another portmanteau nickname where the tables were turned quite recently. Okay. That should be your biggest clue. Yes, uh, the answers would be shown immediately after the quiz. We'll have a very, very quick rundown. I'll be not waiting on questions for more than 5-10 seconds. So please make your uh, uh, check likewise. And probably if uh, people have special request, I might entertain them. Okay. We'll, we'll quickly move to the start of the quiz. This is question number one. This talk about the uh, three uh, street food. And uh, I just need uh, the three street food were named similarly, uh, which has its origin from a English root word because the way the meat is cooked. From which root word does this following three snacks derive their name from? Okay. Question number two. This molecule has a numbing effect on your tongue. It is found in spices, especially a spice from southwestern China. Uh, the southwestern Chinese spice also uh, lends its name to a cuisine and heavily because uh, they use this particular spice in its uh, preparation. 
which cuisine are we talking about? Uh, as part of UAE regulation, uh, they said uh, it, it stated that all weights and measures on packs should be uh, in metrics. So, an entity decided to drop a famous phrase on a popular product because uh, 426 ml of something in every 227 grams of something will not have the same ring, but they retain the iconic image that defined this phrase on the entity and product. Which phrase or entity products are we talking? Okay. Pay attention to the fact that 426 ml of something in 227 grams of something will not have the same ring. And there is an iconic image describing this phrase as well on the pack itself. This nutritionally complete meal can be found in three varieties rice, oatmeal, and marsh garbanzo bean version, a non dairy cheese uh, and raisin combo, and the one that includes applesauce, garlic powder, and spinach. Where do you serve this kind of meal, which is the easier part? Or you can name the meal. And the fact that this meal is not at all appetizing, even though it looks appetizing, it is not at all appetizing, should give you a huge clue. Talking about these buildings, these are a network of buildings which serves as a staging post for the Imperial Mail Service. Okay. And in these uh, kind of buildings, you have this simple fare of uh, uh, eggs and uh, uh, chicken dishes, uh, which is quite mild in nature, and it uses native chicken and egg. Uh, and it was quite a hit among the British official because of its mild nature and tasty uh, taste. And uh, hence, this particular chicken dish was named after this eponymous structure. This is just an example of that particular structure. There are other structures also present. It's a network of building which serves as a staging post for the imperial meal service. Moving on. This vegetable is 96% uh, water and has a host of other uh, nutritional values. But uh, this vegetable is an important part of a sweet that is almost synonymous with the city itself. It also serves as an alternative in Hindu custom because of its shape. So you have to identify the sweet in the city and what alternative does it serve in Hindu custom. Okay. Moving on. Where was this menu served and in whose honor was this menu served this year? When I say this year, I mean 2020. Not 2021, but 2020. Okay. So uh, you have prime steak and chicken fajita, desert trio, which was served in the honor of somebody. And uh, I have blanked out this name because it gives out uh, the answer over here. These are the t uh, type of food which was served and as a rather rich meal was served. So think of uh, that kind of occasion and you should be able to arrive at an answer. And if I can uh, exclude the most uh, common guess, uh, uh, this is nothing to do with uh, the president uh, swearing in ceremony or the vice president uh, swearing in ceremony. Okay, that would be a most common guess. I won't uh, guide you the, uh, uh, towards that. Uh, this commodity was, uh, I mean, this variant of a commodity was uh, originally created for easy storage and processing, but uh, since it was so outrageously priced, it became a rare novelty, a novelty item. Uh, now a whole industry exists in Jetsuji in Kagawa prefecture, where this item has also moved into other forms and are found in high-end Japanese uh, grocery store. Which commodity are we talking about? Which novelty item are we talking about? Uh, so in 1872, the brothers Paul and Raymond uh, founded Laman and Lillet, uh, who created a class of aromatized wines based on uh, uh, Father Karman, who left for Brazil, manufacture fortified drinks based out of quinine. Okay, that should be a hit. And in 1887, one variant of this uh, aromatized uh, wine was created, was called Blank, or was Blank. Uh, I mean, uh, it was white in nature. And uh, about 99 years later, this variant was uh, discontinued. And it uh, caused much con consternation to connoisseurs and fans uh, across the globe 
regarding the authenticity of a certain alcoholic drink, certain iconic pop culture uh, uh, cocktail. So what is this variant we are talking about and which alcoholic drink authenticity are we worried about? Moving on. Uh, this particular regionally speciality in Surat, uh, the more popular name of the dish uh, comes from the way it is prepared. In a way, other pot uh, is uh, put upside down and then underground. It has Palanpuri, Kathiwadi and Andhavadi and Suti uh, variants. And uh, the vegetarian dish has also a meat variant in it, uh, where it has uh, combined with the Vodi community, which Gujarati dish are we talking about, which is, uh, you know, cooked at the time of Uttarayan. So this lady was uh, responsible for various, uh, you know, fundraising campaign and other stuff, but she was instrumental for two, two very uh, significant and iconic achievement regarding this quiz. She is otherwise uh, quite accomplished. She created a nursery rhymes, which has its own place in history. And second, she was instrumental in a campaign started in 1846, which uh, spanned multiple precedent and 17 years before Abraham Lincoln acquisished for the same. So which nursery rhyme did she compose? And what was the campaign all about? So this Burger King, uh, what special distinction does this Burger King holds? for giving two hoots about their name and being part of a landmark list. There aren't any more hints on this. Um, hints for 11. Think of a nursery rhyme which has a very distinctive place in history. That should give you the nursery rhyme for half points. And the campaign is about something related to food only. Okay. Something related to uh, legitimizing something or is uh, you know part of American culture? It has become part of American culture because of this lady and something to uh, something related to foods. Okay. Uh, the fondness. Uh, so this particular food item uh, was a blessing in disguise. Uh, no, not blessing in disguise, but yeah, blessing for Asia Pacific and Hawaiian nature when uh, deep sea fishing was. Uh, restricted and uh, it also became a godsend for uh, Japan and Korea when this item resulted in saving many lives uh, from starvation post World War II but the American GIs completely completely hated it and uh, they often sent hate mail to the primary manufacturer they, the primary manufacturer used to dump these letters of abuse in a single repository as, as pretty much useless and uh, what scientifically processed animal matter is this item that has another ubiquitous meaning in our lives. Moving on. Uh, this is a China-Norway collaboration, The Children of Ginkgo, where uh, uh, it talks about uh, a post-apocalyptic world triggered by an ice age, where uh, two sisters, Rania and Olemia, embarks on a mission to wake the planet from the big sleep, where salvation lies in the union of two Ginkgo dash. Okay, so think uh, if you are besetted by a ice age, what would be your first problem after uh, the ice age has passed? You, what, what are you going to try first? And that's how this entity will come into play. This is a very famous entity. It has uh, featured in a lot of uh, uh, quizzes, uh, quizzes as well. And think of the fact that it was a China-Norway collaboration. China has their contribution in terms of Ginkgo something. Uh, Norway will have their collaboration in point. So this will point you to the real life entity. Moving on. Uh, the Masala Lab uh, by Krishna Shok, uh, when they, he was talking about the importance of a nose uh, and tongue in terms of uh, perceiving food, he says that uh, uh, if we are supposed to draw a parallel, uh, the uh, nose does most of the work than uh, the tongue and he drew a parallel uh, where a duo assumed and appropriated the hard work uh, put in by another person without giving any credit. Um, so think which particular duo are we talking about. So what is common to all this because of the way it looks and tastes? 
so as the helpful hint given by uh, Nambi over there, he said that uh, think of a neighbor, a neighboring country and that should help you. Okay, so these are peanuts, pomegranate, kiwi and jujube, fried jujube. So because of the way it looks and uh, uh, taste, uh, why, uh, means, uh, what is common to all these four? Okay. Moving on. Uh, Maui's uh, were the earliest type of antidepressant which were available, which are given to mental patients. But uh, it uh, soon fell out of favor because of the fact that it ha if it is combined with a tyramine-rich food, uh, if, a, if a patient has uh, had a tyramine-rich food, it will trigger a reaction and kill the patient. So which iconic pop culture dialogue then assumed even a greater level of sinister as an inside medical joke because of the above fact. Think of mental patients, and uh, uh, you should and uh, something from pop culture, and you should get your answer over there. Manufactured in uh, factories in Himeji and Kasu, uh, Kasumi Gara, this food item has special importance in two different occasions. One as uh, souvenirs or uh, region speciality, which are brought back to families and co-workers from trips away, or because it sounds like a Japanese phrase, uh, which translated to English will mean as you will surely win. It is coveted as a good luck charm, especially by students going for exam. In India, we find only one variant. Okay, in, Jap uh, uh, in Japan, we find it in uh, multiple uh, variants. That should be a clue which novelty food items are we talking. Number 19 is about a prop which this actress uses, which has a gummy bear-like material, uh, which tasted awful. So when she, on screen, when she is acting out that whenever she is trying to eat this particular item, she is having a, uh, you know, genuine physical reaction of vomiting it out and choking it out. So uh, the whole experience became very, you know, real over there. And it was also injected with the sugary syrup that it could burst out as well. So it also said that the prop was incredibly realistic because it contained dried pasta to simulate something in the prop. So which uh, uh, actress are we talking about or which character are we talking about? And the prop, what prop are we talking about? Okay. And question number 20, if you go to this country and ask for a buffet style restaurant, you have to use a particular term to refer to it. If you ask for a buffet style restaurant, you have to uh, say this, particular type of uh, uh, term in order to refer to a buffet style restaurant. Uh, the concept of buffet was not uh, uh, forthcoming in this country because they had a history of famines and food shortages. And uh, until the economy started to grow in 1950, where a restaurant manager went to another country and saw a buffet style restaurant over there, which was uh, referred with a rather unpronounceable name. So, what he did was that uh, he used the next uh, available, uh, you know, uh, available icon from that particular region or country and uh, went with that uh, word for referring to buffet style restaurant. Okay, so you have to tell me the home country from where the restaurant manager has come from and with what term this buffet is referred. Coming back to the last question. The etymology of this word come from combining two words, but the first part roughly meets, uh, means to beat down or to knock down. The second place means a place. Okay, so combining these two words will give you this uh, particular word. And this word has French roots, which we talked about. And uh, this uh, word also was part of a portmanteau nickname uh, where the tables were turned quite recently. So identify this word or portmanteau. I think we are done with this uh, quiz. Uh, please wait. We'll be revealing the answer immediately uh, once we have closed the uh, form. Uh, let me see. Okay. We'll probably give you, uh, you know, uh, it's currently uh, 12.14. We'll close the form by 12.17. Okay. 12.17. What were the hints for uh, question number 21? Um, the hints for the question number 21 is very clear. Uh, 
it was part of another portmanteau nickname where the tables were turned quite recently and it was a source of joy as well uh for 17 uh question number 17 yeah you have to give the name of the character uh uh if you give the name of the character it will just help your case rajat and uh question number 11 uh think of a nursery rhyme which has its own place in history and the campaign is something related to food okay so yeah uh yeah i've got we'll, 24 responses so far yeah, please like, uh, go ahead and uh, give out your uh, responses as soon as possible i'll be sharing my uh, answer uh, slides very uh, So, quickly yeah. once we have yeah so yeah 26 people have submitted the answer uh, sorry harit mohan vignesh ankit anuradha darvatkar meedapuram lakshmi narasimha kirtana naman jain manasdeep pranjal shrivatsava amartya saha rahul sarana rohit venkatesh tota abhiram we'll be closing the uh, form in uh, in, in a uh, another 40 seconds yeah please submit your answer sheets meanwhile okay uh, once we have uh, submitted the answers uh, once the form is closed uh, we will be uh, opening up the questions and we can discuss in the uh, live chat please stay back and uh, discuss on this yeah people who are watching the live stream do stay on we will be quickly going through the answers i will be closing the answer sheet in about 20 seconds will be counting down to 20 seconds uh, please note that there is a lag there is a lag so uh, please uh, close your uh, uh, you know answer uh, you know answer form as soon as possible okay i am closing the answer sheet in 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and 0 yeah rahul we can get started with the answers so yeah we will now get started with the answer i know there is a lag so we'll start off anyways yeah so yeah question number 1 now uh, from which uh, root word does this three snacks derive from name from and anybody name the snacks yeah there is answer from uh, rohit challa says shawarma no not sharma sharma is the name of the rightmost part i am looking for a english root word from where the three snacks derive their name from not skewa arun tp says donor gairo sharma i think that's a good uh... yeah donor gairo sharma is the name of the three, uh, three snacks and uh, uh, from which root word uh, does this three uh, snacks derive their name from i think people didn't get that one yeah abhinav das gupta has already given the answer rotation is the word or turn turning rotation turning is the word which i am looking for yeah. yes that is indeed correct anurag uh, yeah. yeah you can post the answer on the chat as well if it is possible yeah. donor gyro gyros and sharma all derive from the word turning or a variant of referring to a turning rotisserie so rotation or uh, turning should uh, give you the answer give you the points Sorry. moving on uh, this molecule has a numbing effect on your tongue and uh, southwestern china which cuisine are we talking about for the previous question chandrakala gedapu says rotisserie is also the same um maybe probably yeah, rotisserie yeah so, I, i will allow rotisserie as well because it is uh, uh, it has the same uh, concept i'll yeah. allow rotisserie as well for question to arun tp gets it right shejwan shejwan yes this is indeed shejwan we are talking about shejwan or sichuan okay uh, shejwan or sichuan chinese coming from sichuan uh, cuisine sorry uh, coming from sichuan peoples good answer then moving on what are we talking about over here 
I think for a previous question, Ishita Das says, I wrote Sevirmik. Sevirmik is not the root word I'm looking for. I'm looking for uh, rotation and uh, turning. Okay. For this question, Rohit Chala says Coca-Cola. And Abbas Das Gupta says Cadbury, two glass milk. No, not two glass milk. Cadbury is correct. Dairy milk is correct. Yes, this is indeed a, a Cadbury in here. So this is uh, this is very, very iconic. So I cannot give uh, points for two glass milk. So this is glass and a half milk. Okay, glass and a half milk in Cadbury dairy milk. If you see the logo over here, this is, there is a glass and a half milk uh, over there. So in Cadbury dairy milk. So the phrase was originally used to explain the amount of milk in every half pound chocolate bar of uh, dairy milk. One and a half glass milk will give you the point. Okay, so I need a glass and a half milk and Cadbury or dairy milk. Okay. Either Cadbury or dairy milk, I will give you the uh, give you points. We'll move on. So this nutritionally complete meal, what are we talking about over here? So it doesn't look like two glass. It looks like one and a half glass. Yeah. Okay. Question four. Venkatesh Anybody? Balakrishnan says prison. Abbas okay. says, says space ISS. Arun TP also says prisons. Akash Gupta has very specific yeah. answer. Neutral of prisons. Yeah. This is indeed the neutral of and prison. Yes. Uh, this is indeed neutral of and prison. Oh my God. Abhiram. You said McDonald's Happy Meal is somebody is going to kill you. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, Rajat I can understand vegan Thanksgiving meal would be a complete downer. So not not space. Neutral of neutral of is served as a punishment for bad behavior in, in US uh, prison. This is a nutritionally complete meal, but it doesn't taste at all good. So it is served as a punishment. Okay, it is served as a punishment. Whoever wrote prisons and uh, uh, likewise uh, at points. US prisons is the one. Okay, quite oh, a few people uh, also answered space. Yeah, a what lot of it? people would go for space, but no, this is not uh, space, but rather uh, prison. Okay. We'll move on. Yeah. Anybody? Will yeah, just prison will uh, fetch you half points. Okay. For the oh, no, yeah, prison will get you full points. Prison will get you full points, yes. Nice fantastic. Okay, anybody, thank you. For this uh, chicken bungalow, dark bungalow says dark says Rajat Guru Raj. Abbas does chicken dark say. bungalow. Yes, this is yes, this is indeed the dark bungalow uh, chicken curry. Okay, this is indeed the dark bungalow chicken curry. Okay, the fact that dark is nothing but post, and uh, these kind of uh, structures were called uh, dark bungalow uh, over there, and that's where the dark bungalow chicken curry was served. Uh, I actually had it last week, so I put a question out of it. No, no, dark Bangla, not Bangla, okay. <laughs> it yeah. is called Dark Bangla, but uh, yeah, probably I'll, I'll uh, accept uh, Dark Bangla. Colloquially Bangla, probably. Colloquially Bangla, yes. Um, anybody on the uh, veg? Can anybody guess the vegetable over here? Yes, Lockwood is the Rudyard Kipling father. Peta says Arun TB. Agra Peta, he adds. Uh, but in Dark Bangalore, Kili bhi milega points, don't worry. Peta, yes, it is indeed Peta, Agra ka Peta. Okay. okay. And what alternative does it serve in uh, Hindu uh, custom? Venkatesh Balakrishnan says human skull, human sacrifice says Keshav Kumar Ja. I human skull, it. human sacrifice, oh my god. Uh, Abhinav Das Gupta has given me the best answer. Alternative to human uh, animal sacrifice, no human sacrifice uh, should be here. But yeah, the, we are looking at uh, uh, okay. If there is sacrifice, I will give answer for that. But please go easy on the human sacrifice part over here. So this is indeed Agra Peta, and it also serve as a sacrificial object in Hindu custom. Okay, rather than sacrificing animals, you can go ahead with. Uh, uh, not uh, Drishti Dosham. I I was looking for the uh, human sacrifice. Uh, not human sacrifice. I'm saying that animal sacrifice. Okay, as a animal sacrifice uh, alternative. 
Uh, I'll move on. Yeah, where was this menu served and in whose honor this menu is served for this year? Yeah, make it aside. I love sacrifice. Okay. Non which can you eat? Non which can you eat? Which can you eat? Okay. Tiger Wood. So, yeah, Tiger Wood. Yeah. This is the, yeah, Augusta Master Tiger Wood. This is the Champions Dinner we, which we are talking about. So, anybody would have Champions Dinner, Augusta Master, Tiger Woods uh, for the second year. Uh, Tiger Thandu Durai. Okay. Yeah, he's a Tiger Thandu Durai will also give you points. I can say that. Not Trump. Trump is not uh, that sophisticated to have this kind of dish. And especially with so many Mexican dish. I don't think he's a candidate for that. But yes, uh, this is the champion's dinners at Augusta Master. And this uh, year it was Tiger Road. Usually the winner uh, decides the menu. Okay, which commodity are we talking about over here? And I think I gave clue five letter word. The five letter word is fruit. Yeah, the five letter word uh, clue which we wanted to give over here was fruit. Which fruit are we talking about? And what kind of fruit we are talking about? Watermelon says Rohit Chala. Yeah, cubical watermelon. Okay. <laughs> Manas. Manas is saying that I would sincerely, sincerely urge Rahul and Nambi not to go public with the scores. No, this is, yes, this is indeed cubical uh, watermelons or square watermelons. We now have pyramid, hearts and uh, heart ones as well. As you can see over here, we are talking about square watermelons over here. Square watermelons would be obviously easy stacking, but they are very expensive. Apparently, it is eight forty dollars. Okay, not lab meat. Uh, yeah. We'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody on this? Uh, what uh, variant are we talking about, and why we are worried about the alcoholic drink authenticity? I believe we gave the clue of pop culture. Yeah, pop culture yes. cocktail. Okay, Martini says G Pravan. G Vodka Martini, Martini, Vodka Martini. Any more answers? James Bond. Martini. James Bond, Martini, Gin and Tonic. No, not Gin and Tonic. Martini. I need a very spe a specific word for that uh, Martini. Yeah, I need uh, Vesper cocktail. Yes, this is Vesper Martini. Uh, and uh, which particular variant are we talking about? No, not absinthe. The answer was almost uh, staring there over there. There is Lille and there is Quinine. So using those, we will have the Kina Lille. Okay. So the Kina Lille was discontinued because uh, uh, when it was described, the Martini, it was uh, three measure of Gordon, one of vodka, half a measure of Kina Lile. Now, since Kina Lile is not there, no, no points for Martini. And if you haven't mentioned uh, Kina Lile, then uh, no points for that as well. So I need Kina Lile, I need Vesper Martini. If, if that is not there, I am not giving points on either side. Half points for Kina Lile, half points for Vesper Martini. Yeah, Pranjal XYZ A has given the perfect answer, Vespa Martini Kinalile. Right, number 10, apparently given in the chat over there. Yeah, somewhere What uh, Gujarati dish are we talking about? Which had this Palanburi, Kathiawadi, Ahmedabadi and Surti variant. Undhuyu, okay. Indeed, Abbas has come up with Undhuyu. This is indeed Undhuyu. Any fans of Undiyu in the timeline? Any, any fans of Undiyu, please raise your hands. Have you had this dish, this, Rahul? Yes, I had this dish. I absolutely hated it. So, okay. decided to have a dish on this. A uh, question on this. Cool. Rohit Sala says yes. me. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Okay. Nice. Okay. There are fans of Undiyu. Please don't kill me. Yeah, but yeah, I, I didn't like this dish. Sorry about that. Uh, on you. We'll move on. Uh, yeah. Anybody who want to give the name of this lady? Uh, 
Hot cross buns is G P one B one. Not hot cross bun. To be fair, that was the first guess that I also had while. Yeah, yeah my uh, my uh, my better half when she saw the question, she said hot cross bun. No, it's not hot cross bun. I'm talking about a more famous. Uh, Uh, nursery rhyme. Right? Mary has a little lamb. Yes, this is the Mary has a little lamb. This is not Elizabeth Fry. No, this is not Harriet uh, Beecher Stowe. I forgot the last names. Is Chandra yeah. Kalagida? No, no. This is uh, yes, indeed. This is Josepha Hill. Uh, Sarah Josepha Hill uh, wrote Mary had a little lamb, which was also the first recorded uh, uh, thing on a recording device by Edison. That was the. Based in history, what we are talking about. She also campaigned for Thanksgiving being accorded as a national holiday in US. If you have given Thanksgiving, I would Thanksgiving holiday should give uh, give you points. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Naman uh, Jain, ideally tag the US question. That's a achievement. <laughs> yeah. We'll move on. Yeah. What special distinction does this Burger King hold? For giving two hoots about their name and being part of a landmark case, this one was a toughie. And the right side image is a very famous uh, image. Uh, it is part of the Four Freedom series by uh, Norman Reed. The original Burger yeah. King says. Yeah, a lot of people have cracked it. I actually thought nobody would be able to crack it, but yes. Uh, 20 miles. It says not the pick of King. Original Burger King. Yes, not owned by BK Corp. Not an actual Burger King. Yes, exactly. That's absolutely correct, Venkatesh. Trademark on local name versus trademark, and uh, uh, the original Burger King is not even allowed to, uh, uh, you know, uh, work on that. And it is owned by the Hoots family. That is a part of a bad pun hint which I have given in the. Question itself, yes, it is owned by the Hoots family. A landmark case for with the food chain Burger King to open within the 20 mile Martun area. Perfect answer, Venkatesh. Moving on, which food item are we talking about? Yeah, indeed, Jean and Betty Hoots. I think this is one of the simplest questions, easiest. Questions. Yeah, this is the this is the easiest question in the lot. I couldn't have given more hints in this particular question. Spam says I've been on that. Yeah, yes, this is indeed the spam. They used to send hate mail to the primary manufacturer and dump this letter of abuse in a single repository. That's pretty much useless. And what scientifically processed animal matter, which would have been acronym to spam. So we are talking about spam over here. Okay, not of all. This is indeed spam. Okay, don't spam the live chat, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Question number fourteen. If you work it out, it should be easy. Yeah, I wrote it in the question, but somebody has to also figure it out. Huh? This is indeed the Salvard uh, 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 seed vault, which we are talking about. Yes. Global Seed Vault. If you have given Global Seed Vault, I will accept that as well. But uh, Salvard will give you extra brownie points. Okay. This is indeed the Salvard uh, Seed Vault, uh, Norway being that year, and the blank was seeds. This is about union of two ginkgo seeds. Good one, but tough, says Venkatesh. Thank you, Venkatesh. Yeah, but it was quite workable if you have just had a bit of a look into it. Uh, question number fifteen. Yes. What is being talked about over here? G. Pranav. Yes. G. Pavan. Yeah. Uh, Pavan B has said that Watson Creek and Rosalind Franklin. Watson Creek and uh, Rosalind Franklin is what we are talking about. Yes, and Becquerel as well. Yes, indeed. Becquerel. We often forget him as well. This is indeed Watson Creek and Rosalind Franklin. Who we got? Okay, I'm curious to know the answers for this one. Yeah. What is common to all these? Maybe some people went down the Pakistan, Sri Lanka, or some kind of other routes. 
China says, I don't know if you got the country correct. Now, I'm in China. Chinese name says Rajit Gururaj. Abha said Chinese origin. No, not Chinese origin. Rajat says Chinese name. Yes, that is what I'm uh, looking for. Not mis Yeah, not misname. So primarily, yeah, that's correct. Yes, Chinese gooseberry is kiwi. Chinese Chinese gooseberry, Chinese date, name of uh, uh, other fruits in the anemia. Yeah, pretty much I, I need this. They are called Chinese variant of some other food item based on their appearance of taste. Crown nuts are called China Madam or China almonds. Uh, pomegranate are known as Chinese apple due to their close appearance of an apple. Kiwis are known as chi Chinese gooseberry because of their ripe gooseberry taste. And jujube are also known as Chinese date because of their appearance when dry. Ashwini Nattu says next in the series would be dragon fruit. It won't be dragon fruit because the kamalam or something yeah. like that. Okay. <laughs> we'll move on. Which iconic pop culture dialogue uh, assumed uh, a greater level of sinister because of the story, because of the reason which I have given over here? Yeah, I wanted to put sugar chini as well, but uh, uh, it's just chini over there, so I didn't want to put it. So yeah, this is fava beans and chianti. I ate his liver with fava beans and not wine, but chianti and a nice glass of chianti, but I will give it to you. Okay, Hannibal left uh, fava veins and eating, eating liver, as Rajat's Guru Raj would say. Okay, yeah, indeed. This is Hannibal Lecter's infamous quote I ate his liver with fava veins and nice chianti. Chianti, liver, and fava veins are all rich in tyramine, and it is a declarative statement by Hannibal that he isn't taking his meds. Okay. So, for the previous nice question, crack. Rajat says, So now I understood the render cry of Chinya Badam in daily sessions. Sorry? So in railway stations, I think probably the vendors cry Chiniya Badam. Yeah, yeah, Chiniya Badam. So whenever I used to, uh, so uh, whenever I was uh, living with my friends and I would say that, can you buy a half kilo of Badam for me? Because we used to refer it as Badam in our own household as well. Okay. So we never said Chiniya Badam, we used to say Badam only. So my uh, friends would look in puzzle, uh, puzzlement and say that, why, why do you need half kilo of uh, almonds in your house? Then I would explain them that no, no, this is peanuts and yeah. this is like China. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Which food items are we talking about? Which is about the region speciality, which we get uh, in only one variety in our time. Kit Kat says our Kit Kat. Abbas, Jipavan, Akash, Rohichala, everybody have got it correct. This is Indian Kit Kat. These are flavored Kit Kat in Japan. Kit Kat will also get you points. Uh, among other fl uh, flavors, it exists in Atsuki, Red Bean, Benimo, Purple Sweet Potato, and Matcha, which is green tea. Okay. So, yeah, Kit Kat so means uh, you will always win. That is how uh, like Kit Kat has a different place for. Uh, school going children. Question number 19. Not Chit Chat, but Kit Kat. Uh, uh, which actress and which prop are we talking about? Okay, you are joking. How do we source these flavors in India? As Rajat, probably you have to travel to Japan. No, you can uh, get this. Probably you have to look on Amazon. Yes, this is indeed Daenerys uh, eating the horse heart, the stallion heart. Uh, in not exactly horse heart, it should be a stallion heart. Otherwise, you might uh, produce somebody else. Uh, but yeah, this is indeed uh, Daenerys eating uh, uh, the stallion heart in Game of Thrones. So you can also put uh, Emilia Clark. I will accept that as well. Okay, I didn't put the original image. It is quite gross. I went with the animated version. Sorry about that. But yes, I need uh, Daenerys Targaryen or Emilia Clark and the Stallion Heart. Okay. Moving on to the question number 20. Which country are we talking about? So for the previous thing, Ashwini Nattu says there is a site that sends a box of Japanese. Yeah, please share the site. Yeah, please I would share be the happy, to, happy to source these uh, Kit Kats. For this yeah, question. this is indeed Japan and Vikings. Good crack there, Akash. This is indeed uh, Japan and Vikings. Uh, 
uh, they couldn't uh, pronounce the word called smorgas board and that's why it became a term for viking and they don't even say viking they say say biking okay so they say biking style and uh, uh, more often than not foreigners have turned up in biking short when they uh, were supposed to turn up in normal formals so that they can go for buffet style restaurant because of the confusion uh, no i don't love japan but there's a lot of uh, you know uh, trivia food related trivia associated with japan so that's why uh, i went there so ashwini says boksu is a site be uh, rajat sure i will okay. definitely check it out and i'll probably uh, have a question on that and question number 21 obviously uh, a happy note to finish the uh, quiz on although the word ha- doesn't have any happy connotation otherwise so for for fellow okay. japanese fan there is a documentary series called japanorama online check it out find it you will find yeah there are half- yeah sorry yeah japanorama so do check out japanorama it uh, has different uh, uh, you know documentaries on different places i actually uh checked it out it was quite a cool uh, uh series yeah, where you can that. learn the culture and other associated history about the places yeah okay. this is indeed gabatar and abatar which i was talking about so yeah we won in uh wow. finally the gabatar has been reached okay so we are talking about gabatar so that's uh bring to the end of this particular quiz thank you and if you have any feedback you can either provide it on the google form or you can also write it to me on rahul.14loops@gmail.com feedback and big bats and praises are all uh, welcome thank you thank you again for the quiz thanks nambi for uh, uh, organizing this thank you rahul thanks for taking the time lot of the questions are till like la- things i learned and lot of uh, the masala lab question the question on chinese name those things were yeah. i didn't know all of those things so i also learned a lot thank you for taking the time setting the quiz thanks all for the pleasure yeah thanks for all the yeah. people who participated too some feedback which is coming in venkatesh balakrishnan says excellent quiz enjoyed it chandrakala gedappu says awesome set abhiram look i'm reading reading through the yeah uh, the feedback over there thanks uh, yeah. thanks for all your uh what's of appreciation i hope to conduct more quizzes uh, with uh, nambi in the near future sure thank you ishita das says thanks nambi brilliant ramo it sounds like rambo to okay that's a uh, you know uh, they have made a Short small like uh, namo and i am ramo okay so okay cool thank you okay and thank you uh, everyone yeah, see you in a quiz in another quiz so thanks everyone thank you bye looking forward to that as well thank you